This is Valerie from Valerie's Photo Channel. I'm so excited that Adobe has finally released Lightroom 6, and I think you will be too. I want to show you some of the main new features, but first I want to clear up a little bit of confusion that some people seem to have about this new release. Uh, that's Lightroom Creative Cloud, or CC, versus Lightroom 6. So hopefully this will help. If you subscribe to Adobe's Photographer's Plan for Lightroom and Photoshop, then it will show up as Lightroom CC, or Creative Cloud. The standalone version is called Lightroom 6, so they're basically the same thing. The main difference is that with a Creative Cloud version, you get the Lightroom Mobile, and then if Adobe makes any upgrades or enhancements down the road, you'll get them automatically with the Creative Cloud. Okay, so let's take a look at the new features. Well, this isn't a huge upgrade like with Lightroom 4 and 5, there are some much asked for new features that will help speed up your workflow. Basically, speed is really the big news. So let's start with the major performance enhancements. In the past, Lightroom could be pretty slow sometimes. For example, um, I find it slow or used to find it slow when doing spot healing. Now you get much faster speed with GPU acceleration. And that means that Lightroom now uses your computer's GPU, which takes the load off your main processor, and so that helps increase the speed. So you'll find that when you adjust sliders, the changes will render much faster. So to find out if your computer or if Lightroom is using your computer's GPU, then just go to Edit in the top menu, and then go to Preferences. And under the Performance tab, you, you should see Use Graphics Processor, and you should, ha you should have a check mark here. And then you can see your graphics card here. So I'm just going to click OK to get out of that. OK, so now let's uh, look at some of the new other new features. Let's start with the gradient, the graduated filter. Now this tool has been around for a while, um, but now they've made it better. So there's a new brush tool that you can use to brush over areas that you want to include or exclude from the graduated filter. So this is really helpful when you're, say, darkening a sky, but there's a person or a building or some other object that would also get affected. So for example, on this image here, I want to make the sky bluer, but I don't want the rock blue. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a graduated filter like I normally would. And I'm just going to add some blue, so I'll move the temperature to the left, and I'm going to decrease exposure, mm, try there at minus 0.66, and then I'm also going to maybe just pop up the saturation just a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and I'm going to hold down the shift key so I drag straight, and I'm going to drag down the graduated filter. So now that looks better, and I could probably, if I want to make it a little bluer, I could move the temperature down maybe a little bit more. But you can see that here the rock, this part of the rock especially, looks kind of blue. And you can also show on mask overlay, you can, you can see um, all of the areas that are being affected. So I want to take away the blue, or as you can see the pink here, um, from the rock. So now I can use this brush tool over here in the upper right, and I'm just going to um, turn the plus into a minus by holding down the Alt key, and then I'm just going to paint over that rock, and you can see that it's taking away the effects of the graduated filter. So now the filter is only applying to the sky. So I think that's a, a very cool new option and something that I had hoped to see for a while. And then there's also a similar feature um, with the radial tool. So it also, has, um, it also has a brush you can't see here because it's not highlighted. Um, if I was applying, if I was going to apply it here, you can see that there's a brush tool. Okay, so I'm just going to um, delete that. And um, now let's go on to a couple of other features. 
A big one is the ability now to merge an HDR image right in Lightroom. You don't have to go to Photoshop anymore. So this is really awesome for people who love to um, create HDR images. So I'm going to select these two images here in the bottom of the film strip. And then up at the top, you can either right click um, with your mouse or you can go up to the top and click on photo and then photo merge and select HDR. And then Lightroom is creating a preview. See how fast that was? Okay, you have some options here. Now you can choose auto align if uh, maybe you didn't shoot with a tripod that I did, so that's not necessary. And this will, I think this will slow down the creation process um, when it has to take that time. And I'm going to leave auto tone. I'll just leave that checked. And then deghosting, you get several amounts here. Um, this you can use, say, if it, if it was a windy day and maybe you had some movement in the trees or the bushes, you could select some deghosting to help uh, reduce any kind of blur with that. And then you can have this box here checked to show an overlay to sh so that it would show areas that were uh, where the deghosting was applied. So I don't have any to worry about, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Merge. And then you can see in the upper right, Lightroom, you can see the progress. Lightroom is creating the merged HDR image. And it is almost done. Oh, it is done. See how quick that was? It's so cool. And so now that image appears down here in my film strip. I want you to notice something. This is a DNG file, which means it's a type of a RAW file. It's not a TIFF file that you um, that has everything you know all of the information already baked in so this you can edit as a raw file which is really pretty awesome so for example i want to go and make some lens correction um, and um, enable profile corrections and that's easy to do and you can go ahead and do everything that you would um, as to a raw file you can adjust the white balance and you have all your options here etc so that's pretty nice. And there is a similar um, built-in panorama stitching that works uh, similarly to the way the HDR merge works. So that's a very nice option to not have to go into Photoshop. And now there's another feature I want to show you and that's the facial recognition. So I'm going to, I'm going to select these two images here and go over to the library. And so there is a new button that's been added down here just above the film strip, this people button. And so Lightroom, you can teach it to recognize faces. So um, you can see right now that Lightroom is guessing, is this Madison? And I, so if it is, I can go ahead and uh, mark this check mark. And then that, that will show that, okay, that's named. And this is showing as unnamed. And then this is also Madison. So I can go ahead and click uh, yes, or if it wasn't, I can have it uh, and say, no, this is not Madison. So I'm just going to go ahead and click yes. And so that's been added to uh, the database. And then as you identify more people, Lightroom gets better at locating them in other images. And then people are automatically tagged as keywords. So later on, you can do a simple text search to find images with a particular person's name. So those are just some of the pretty cool features in Lightroom 6. And there are a few others that I've got detailed um, that you can read on my blog at ValerieGetch.com. So that pretty much wraps up this video. And thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about Lightroom, see more tutorials, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.